time soon. We're gathering an audience. We gotta make sure the whole audience gets here. If the audience doesn't get here, what are we doing? I'm making fun of my typo. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Mystery Hours, Safe and Sober, where you are helping us help students, teenagers, a holistic approach, teenagers, teachers, parents, educating them on mental health and how your teenagers can make great choices for themselves. And a big part of that is making materials. You have to reach students in a way that makes sense to them. So Safe and Sober makes these really high quality, really, done, really well done materials to reach them. And you're helping to support that. Do you remember like when you were in high school? When I was in high school, certainly, you'd get like a pamphlet and then they'd roll in the TV and they'd put a tape in the VCR and that was uh, a program. This is not what Safe and Sober does. So, uh, you might be wondering, where are we at? Where are we at? You've been talking about this $30,000 goal for today, and now it's hour five of six. Where are we at? Well, here we go. <whistles> There's the thermometer. Let me try it again. Here we go. $22,600. This is amazing. This is just a day in Tuesday, and you guys have all come together to raise that much money. I want to thank, uh, here's uh, some random donors. Uh, Daniel Ogunyemi, thank you. Spencer Harris, thank you. Emily Dunn, thank you. Also, we want to thank our corporate sponsors. Oh, maybe you're saying to yourself, I want to be a part of this. How do I donate? Well, go to our Facebook page, and at the top of it is a link. The pinned post is a link, so you can donate. You can also find the link in the comments here, and you can donate. The sun just came out. It got a lot brighter in my studio. All right. Uh, let's thank our corporate sponsors. Oh, first, let me think. The whole day is brought to you by Cox Health. I have gotten so bright. Um, so, yes, let's thank Cox Health. And let's thank our corporate sponsors. Boop. MoDOT, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Larson and, Larson and Miller Injury Law, Great Southern Bank. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you for your support. We have a great, get rid of that. We have a great segment here. We get to hear from students in two different ways. One, um, uh, it's about six, six minutes or so. Um, we get to hear uh, from students talking to each other uh, in a studio, we recorded kind of talking frankly about high school and what that's like. And then after that, I'll come back and then we'll hear my conversation with a couple of, a couple of students. Um, also, this hour is brought to you by Ozark Chevrolet. Guess what kind of car they have and guess where they're located. That's how you know it's a good name. Ozark Chevrolet. They have Chevrolets and they're in Ozark. All right, let's get to it. Anything else I need to mention? Uh, I hear some comments coming in. My camera, uh, my camera's trying to figure out what to do with all this newfound sunlight. <laughs> There's a good comment. So bright. I think I see a halo. Must be the halo effect of this nonprofit. Must be it. While, while I'm away, I'm going to try and fix it. <laughs> all right, let's see this. Uh, these are students talking about, talking about high school. Please enjoy. <laughs> I'm Sophia, and I'm a senior. I'm Joe, and I'm also a senior. I'm Brooke, and I'm a senior. I'm James, and I'm also a senior. Okay, so the question is, why do you think your classmates drink? Honestly, I think my classmates drink because it makes them feel cool. Like, they just want to be a part of something, I guess. I don't know. It makes them feel like they have a spot with, like, the in crowd or whatever. Yeah. I think it's, like, an acceptance thing. Like... I have some friends that are starting to hang out with college people and they're starting to get drunk with them. And it's like, you guys are doing it just so you can get in with like the college crowd before you guys go. Mm -hmm. I think it's also people find self-worth in alcohol and people find it like they get a sense of joy and happiness from it. What are the opinions on alcohol where you live? Um, I think for me, the opinions are pretty relaxed on alcohol, except for in my actual house. Like my grandparents are 
pretty big drinkers. And so they raised my parents like in that environment. But my parents like recognized that it was something that was like not great for their health. So I've kind of adapted my parents view on it. So I'd say when I was younger, it was really relaxed. But like the older I've gotten, I don't know why my parents like they kind of like slowed down with like hanging out with people that drink, I guess. And like they don't really drink at all anymore. And they kind of like taught me to be like against it. They've just been like, it, nothing good comes out of it. So, I mean, it's a pretty big like no in our house. Yeah, I think it kind of depends on what circle you run in. Cause you know, when you're at school, there's different opinions about it than when you're, you know, with your family or, you know, even the side of town that you're on has different opinions on it. My family is pretty relaxed about it. I mean, they don't want me to do it, but they never said, you know, when you're of age, you can't. How dangerous is alcohol? I've met people who've told me about how they can get like 50 beers for like under 50 bucks. So that's what's really dangerous for me is like how accessible it is to people and how like easily people can take advantage of it. And I think that people sometimes they'll put drugs in one category and they'll put alcohol in another category. And they think that alcohol is so much safer than drugs when really they're both almost just as dangerous. If not, alcohol can be more dangerous than any than some drugs can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because it's not illegal doesn't mean you can <laughs> not get hurt from it. Yeah. 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 All right. So how do you guys handle peer pressure? I know I'm extremely stubborn in general, so I'm not going to do anything I don't want to do. And especially drinking, you know, if I know it's going to affect my future, I don't want to be an alcoholic. So why would I do alcohol just because someone told me to? It's really my mom who kind of like pushes that like she's uh, you know she's very conscious of my health and my how i spend my time i mean i feel like if i wouldn't have my mom didn't have my mom then i would be peer pressured pretty easily but like being raised by her i definitely feel like i have like a defensive line of like things to say and like things to do to get out of situations where i know that it would end up being bad or like end up getting me into a bad situation so it's my mom honestly I had a few friends that actually like when I started to realize that they were doing that, I kind of did have like a little bit of resentment towards them because I was like, now I don't feel like I can, I don't know. Now I just feel like there's like a separation there. Like I don't feel as close to them as before. But uh, yeah, I get that. I definitely understand what you're saying. Yeah. What influences you not to drink? Definitely my family. Yeah, I agree. I just feel like. I have so many things that I value over drinking that if I did choose to drink, I would lose or I would lose trust between, I would just lose so many relationships. When we talk about like, I don't, cause I don't want to lose friends from drinking. And it's like, if you lose friends because you're drinking, it's not because they don't care about you. It's just, you have to surround yourself with people who do care about you enough to make sure you don't drink and to lose those relationships of the people who really do care about you and don't want you to drink and get hurt. That would be a big deal along with losing control. I know a big thing for me is having control and having freedom. And if I were to drink, you know, and someone were to find out, I would lose freedoms. I would lose control. I could lose control of my mind, my body. You never know what you're going to do. What do your friends need to know about drinking? I think that the easiest thing to say is that it's dangerous and that it can definitely affect you later in life and not just to just not be like close minded about the effects of drinking and that it's um, definitely something that can affect you throughout your entire life. It's not something that's going to like just end after drinking one night. I feel like a lot of people seek self-worth and self-value in alcohol and people need to know that that's not where your worth and your value come from. It comes from comes from yourself and who, and who you are and who you think you are. I just say, um, you know, just wait. Wait until you're of age. You know, what are you going to miss out on? Partying, being put in dangerous situations. Like, all you're going to miss out on is being around people who don't want the best for you if you're drinking underage. Yeah, uh, I hope you take the messages from that of those students sharing that and also look at the production quality. Look at the production quality, safe and sober.
creates content for students that looks really good. Um, let's add some uh, comments here. As a parent, I hope my kids are this mature with their actions. We must keep the conversation going. Yes. Uh, let's go to this one. I want to poll the teenagers in my house with these same questions. You know, one of the things Safe and Sober really promotes is having the conversations. As a parent, being um, bold enough to have those conversations. All right, um, I was bold enough to talk to some high school students, and uh, I would like for you guys to see that now. These are real life high school students. <laughs> They're real. Uh, Jamarius and Cameron uh, took a few minutes with me the other day, so uh, please enjoy this conversation. This conversation. <laughs> joining us Pleasure so uh, so kind of like we had, were talking about before we started the the interview adults often um, are like I remember high school I know exactly what high school is like but like high school for them might have been a long time ago um, and they're like different stresses now um, I wonder if uh, maybe Cameron will start with with you what are some of the stresses you feel or, or you see in, in high school or, or in teenagers these days? Just work. We, there are some of us that have jobs, some of us just struggling with schoolwork, all the assignments we have. Um, then some of us are just struggling to please our friends, please the people around us. And then others are just struggling in general for no reason in particular. Yeah. Yeah, Jamarius, what would you say? How, how do you feel about that? Uh, I think most kids stress about what's going on in their life, uh, schoolwork, home life, everything around them. I think they stress because they think that they might fail, that they haven't met the uh, right, uh, right, I'm trying to think of the word, the right, you know, goal, right, achievement. And I think that they stress and worry about what what might not what might not happen in life uh, happen. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, and then in terms of like, so, you know, so one of the things Safe and Sober talks about is um, trying to take help, take a holistic approach and help take care of mental health and get an understanding of mental health because w when we don't, we tend to maybe there's substances and substance abuse or, or drinking or that sort of thing. What do you guys see? What do you see in your schools in terms of drinking or vaping or, or substance abuse? Uh, Jamar Jamarius, we'll start with you. Uh, I see it a lot. It happens like mainly before and after school and sometimes in school, I see kids, they sneak it in their backpacks and they go in the bathroom and do it. And I don't, I don't think it's a good thing to do for us teenagers. And I don't like it. And I see a lot of kids do it. And they just, they really don't care what other people think about when they're doing it. Drinking and smoking. And they do it a lot. They like to abuse it and it gets, a, it gets them addicted and hooked onto it. Yeah. Yeah. So you said um, you'll see. Uh, People have stuff in their backpack and use it in the bathroom. Yeah, they go they go to the bathroom to where nobody's around or nobody sees them, and they usually smoke or drink in the bathroom. Yeah, we had our bathrooms locked off at my school during lunch because there were vape circles in the bathrooms. Oh, interesting. Now vaping, like, uh, it seems like that's become. I don't know how common do you guys see that? How common is it in school? What do you say, Cameron? A lot. I see it a lot. There are people who just do it out in the courtyard in school after lunch. A lot of my friends, or a couple of my friends will say it relieves stress or something. I don't know how true that is, but it's something I hear from people. Yeah, and uh, and that, that kind of points to what we're saying, that it's uh, people are looking for ways to, ways to relieve stress. So what do you guys, um, what do you guys see as, as ways to ways to help that? Like Safe and Sober obviously does a lot of work towards it, but what do you guys see um, or what works for you, I guess, Jamarius? 
uh, I just try to stay away from all that negativity and stuff. And I, I don't think us teenagers should be around it. I think us, I think the uh, older, older people, the uh, people that guardians and parents, I think they should be better at keeping that away from kids. So kids don't spread it around to other kids and kids get hooked onto it. I think that they should stop selling it and producing it. Cause I think it's really making a bad influence on us teenagers. Yeah. Cameron, what, what would you say? What's, uh, or why do you, why do you stay away from it? And, and what helps you to stay away from it? Just bad for me. It's bad for people. I see it has negative effects on others. So I say, Hey, I probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. And then... Yeah. It seems like, um, I know you guys are both involved with the boys and girls club, but it seems like having having good role models or even just like having good messaging in your life that uh, tells you there's, there's other options. Seems like it would, seems like that would really make a difference. You know, safe and sober wants to come in and say like, you may only see this reaction to stress, but there's actually other, there's other ways to handle it and having other people, other people in your life to, to help do that. Do you guys feel like that message would, would really help students who are struggling? Uh, I think it would. I think it would make a big impact on kids because I think kids really don't un don't know that there's like a boys and girls club or safe and sober out there. I think if safe and sober made that speech, it would like it get kids and teenagers involved into it and make them make better decisions in the future. Yeah. How about you, Cameron? I think that if safe and sober went out and they said, "Hey, instead of doing this, this, and this to cope with whatever you're dealing with." if you went to Boys and Girls Club or Safe and Sober or any of these other multiple organizations to cope with whatever you're dealing with, then that could help a lot of people. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's, let's end with, with this. So there's a lot of folks that are watching this that are considering uh, making financial contributions, supporting Safe and Sober. Um, what would you say, what would you want to say to the folks that are, that are watching in terms of the, the impact they could have. Jamarius? Uh, I just want to tell them that you need to watch and surround yourself with great people. Stay away from all negativity. Make sure you go down the right road. Don't go down the right, uh, bad path. Uh, keep your head up and stay safe and sober. That's great. How about you, Cameron? Yeah. Uh, there's always a better way to do things. Take it slow. There's a not it's not always going to be easy but it's going to be worth it that's great you guys are uh <laughs> you guys are awesome you're good uh you're so much more mature than i was as a teenager you're, i appreciate you guys um sharing with us and then also kind of offering some some wisdom and some some hope there so so thanks for joining us guys <clears throat> how about those guys uh mature and had uh had great thoughts and um, wasn't even distracted when the voice came over the loudspeaker. Cameron wasn't. They did good. Um, so let's real quick, we're gonna uh, end our segment here, but I wanted to be sure to thank our virtual sponsors. Thank you so much, American National, Mostly Serious, Missouri Trial Lawyers Care, Strong Garner, Bauer Trial Attorneys. And thanks to you all, we are getting there. Three o'clock, it's our last one coming up. We're gonna hear about where your money goes from Pam Holt who's a board member. Um, you can still donate, go to the top of our Facebook page or in the comments, you can find the link and, uh, and you can be a part of making a difference in teenagers' lives today. Also go to the auction and get some awesome stuff. So thank you guys so very much. We'll see you. Wait, let me put some music coming up. We'll see you soon.